Three Minute Mastery from Module 1 Common Rocks and Minerals. Here we're going to take a look at some of the different types of rock that you would expect to encounter underground. So we've got a few different types of rock here. I'd like you to notice a couple of different things. This one is pretty glassy, right? It's pretty shiny. This one is porous. This one seems to have some lines in it. This one looks kind of, well, marbled, right? This one seems to be compressed sand or something like this. So keep those things in mind as we talk about the different types of rock. The first one I'd like to introduce is igneous. Uh, this is made from magma or lava that cools. Igneous is further classified by its cooling rate um, and its chemical makeup. If it cools quickly, then it's glassy. If it cools more slowly, then it tends to be coarser grain. Examples of this would be obsidian or granite. Another rock type is sedimentary from the root word sediment. Uh, so these tend to, these rocks uh, are formed from sediments that l settle in layers, uh, often consisting of eroded particles, uh, maybe other types of rocks or minerals, so things that precipitate out of water. Water is always crucial to the accumulation or formation of sedimentary rock. So examples would include shale, limestone, uh, and even sandstone. The third rock type is metamorphic. From the root word metamorph. Uh, so other top other rock types, igneous or metamorphic or sedimentary rocks that have been subjected to intense heat and pressure will end up changing into metamorphosizing into metamorphic rocks. So examples of a metamorphic rock would be gneiss, G-N-I-E-S-S, -S, or marble. It's interesting to think that marble that we think of in our countertops and our kitchens used to be some other kind of rock. Why do these rocks uh, come to be where they lay? Consider that boulders and cobblestones, fairly large rocks, are found up in high mountain areas. Gravel and coarse sand are found in upland rivers, so the Platte River, the Yellowstone River, and so on. And very fine silt and clays are carried by ma major rivers out into the ocean. It's interesting to note that igneous and metamorphic and sedimentary rocks are all changed into one another. So igneous can become sedimentary as well as metamorphic. Sedimentary can become metamorphic. Metamorphic might become igneous. Metamorphic rocks may become sedimentary and so on and so on. So it gets pretty crazy. They all become one another. So for your notes, I have a couple of questions. One, what's the difference between magma and lava. Two, remember I said that metamorphic rocks are subjected to extreme heat and pressure. So I guess my second question is, do they get so hot that they melt? Think about that and let me know.